Megan again, head of Manuscript at Scribe. In this lesson, I'm gonna show you how to write the perfect author bio. Unless you're one of the household name authors like Stephen King, J.K. Rowling, or Malcolm Gladwell, then you have to assume that most of the people thinking about buying your book will not know who you are. So how will they learn about you? The author bio. It goes on your book, your Amazon page, and most marketing material. And it's the way most people will first hear about who you are. Even though very few authors think about the bio and few writing or publishing guides talk about it, your author bio will impact sales, frame your reputation, and often determine what media coverage you get. How does this work? Author authority is consistently cited as one of the main factors that influence book buying. If you can establish yourself as an authority on your book topic, readers will be much more inclined to buy your book, read it, and regard you the way you want them to. People considering spending their disposable income on your book are looking for a reason to do it or not, and a great bio helps them do it, while a bad bio often will stop them. Furthermore, if you're like most authors and want your book to help create more business for you or establish your credibility or authority on a subject, Often the author bio is more important than what's actually in the book. How could this be? The sad but true reality is that more people will read your author bio than your actual book. It takes a long time to read a book, but it's very easy to make a snap judgment based on a short paragraph, and most people do just that. This is doubly true for media. Most people in media work very hard under tight deadlines. They don't have time to read long books or long meandering pitch emails. But a good author bio cuts right to the point by telling them, this is a person who is important and I need to pay attention. How to craft your author bio. Writing about yourself as an author is typically a task that most writers shy away from, but writing an effective author bio doesn't have to be so painful. In fact, with a few simple steps, you can have an effective bio that will help sell your book. Less is usually more when it comes to author bios, and you wanna make sure you do and don't do the following. Number one, demonstrate your authority and credentials on the subject of your book, but don't overstate them. Number two, include things that build credibility or are interesting without going overboard. Number three, mention your website and any books you've previously written, but don't oversell them. Number four, use relevant names if they're appropriate without name dropping. And number five, keep it short and interesting without leaving anything important out. Do you notice a pattern here? Good author bios walk a line. They avoid being boring and uninspiring and they avoid being ridiculously over-promotional and arrogant. Now we'll break each category down and then give you some examples. Number one, Demonstrate your authority and credentials on your book subject, but don't overstate them. Whatever your book is about, it's important that you establish your credentials in that area. For example, if you're writing a diet book, mention any sort of professional degrees or training, your own weight loss success, or other things that clearly signal your authority and credibility on weight loss. If you struggle with what to say about yourself, remember that you want to make clear why you're credible and professional as opposed to an unknown, untrusted source. As in, why should the reader listen to you? For some types of books and authors, this is harder to do. If there's no clear way to signal direct authority or credentials, for example, a novel or a book of your life stories, then don't make up things or try to invent authority. Focus on the other parts of the author bio. Number two, include things that build credibility or are interesting to the reader without going overboard. In your author bio, you'll want to include some things you've accomplished in your life, especially if you don't have direct credentials and authority in the book's subject matter. This will help your audience understand why they should spend their time and money reading what you've got to say. If you have something about you or your life that is unusual, even if it's not totally relevant, you should still consider putting it in your bio. For example, if you were a Rhodes Scholar, or you started a major national organization, or won a national championship in ping pong, whatever. The point is to show the reader that you've done things that matter. 
that you're an effective person, even if those things don't matter specifically to this book. If you're lacking credentials or exciting accomplishments, you can always put in your passions and interests. Anything that you enjoy doing, writing about, or consider a hobby, especially if it is relevant to the book topic. That being said, do not ramble on and on about things that the reader doesn't care about. Cramming too much into your bio can show insecurity and bore the reader. Put yourself in your reader's shoes and ask yourself, does this fact really matter to anyone but me? Number three, mention any books you've written and your website, but don't oversell them. If you've written other books, especially on this subject, make sure to mention them. If they're bestsellers or won awards, even better. If you've won multiple awards and you're finding that listing them all is becoming tedious, aim for brevity instead. John Smith is an award-winning author whose works include, is more than enough to show your readers you know what you're doing. If you have a website, a longer bio page, or anything else that helps promote your brand, then make sure you include it at the bottom of your bio, assuming this meets your goals. Again, you don't want to brag here, so just be humble and simply put something like, find out more about John at www.johnsmithwriter.com. It's simple and has a clear call to action. Number four, use relevant names if they're appropriate without name dropping. Yes, name dropping can be really off-putting if it's done wrong, but there's a right way to do it. For example, if you're relatively unknown, you can say something like, the woman who Seth Godin called the most important writer of our time reveals to you the secrets of... This way, you're trading on Seth Godin's reputation and establishing your credentials at the same time, assuming he actually said this. The wrong way to name drop would be to say something like, in the best-selling tradition of Seth Godin, Gary Vaynerchuk, and Tim Ferriss, that's name dropping because you're putting yourself in the same category of those, as those authors, or something like saying, the Seth Godin of his generation. Also, if you've worked for or with very well-known people, name dropping is not seen as bad. It's seen as an effective signal to the reader of your importance and ability. What matters is that there is a reason that you're using someone else's name that makes sense and is not just a gratuitous name drop. Number five, keep it short and interesting without leaving anything important out. While your readers are interested in finding out more about you, they don't want to get bored or listen to arrogant bragging about how great you are. If your bio is too long or too full of overstated accomplishments and awards, it'll turn your readers off and actually make you look less credible. Typically, if you keep your bio under 250 words, you're going to be okay. Anything longer than that means you've gone on too long about your accomplishments, your personal life, or both. Cut it down to the most important things. Remember, your bio grows as you grow. Treat your bio as a living document. Just because you've written it once does not mean it's finished. As you grow and change, so too should your bio. Also remember that if you're writing for different genres or different topics, that some of your accomplishments and past works will be more relevant to your readers than others. It's not a bad idea to tweak your author bio for each new work you release. If you can't write about yourself, have friends help you. Most people, especially writers, have a hard time writing about themselves. Often, the author bio is the most difficult part of the marketing process. If you're unsure about whether your author bio seems either incomplete or too arrogant, run it by a few friends for feedback. It's always easier for your friends to praise you and see the amazing things that you do. Here are some examples of good and bad author bios. Good balance, Tim Ferriss. Tim does lean aggressively into the idea of listing all the cool things he's done and noteworthy outlets that have talked about him, but still makes his bio interesting and relevant to the reader of his books. Timothy Ferris is a serial entrepreneur, number one New York Times bestselling author, and angel investor slash advisor, Facebook, Twitter, Evernote, Uber, and 20 plus more. Best known for his rapid learning techniques, Tim's books, The 4-Hour Workweek, The 4-Hour Body, and The 4-Hour Chef have been published in 30 plus languages. The 4-Hour Workweek has spent seven years on the New York Times bestseller list. Tim has been featured by more than 100 media outlets, including the New York Times, The Economist, Time, Forbes, Fortune, Outside, NBC, CBS, 
ABC, Fox, and CNN. He has guest lectured in entrepreneurship at Princeton University since 2003. His popular blog, www.4hourblog.com, has 1 million plus monthly readers, and his Twitter account, at T Ferris, was selected by Mashable as one of only five must follow accounts for entrepreneurs. Tim's primetime TV show, The Tim Ferris Experiment, www.upwave.com slash TFX teaches rapid learning techniques for helping viewers to produce seemingly superhuman results in minimum time. Confusing and slight overselling, Cheryl Strayed. Cheryl is similar to Tim, but runs several unrelated things together in a confusing way and mentions things that no reader would ever care about, like who the director of a movie based on her book is. This same bio could be 25% shorter and much stronger. Cheryl Strayed is the author of number one New York Times bestseller, Wild, the New York Times bestseller, Tiny Beautiful Things, and the novel, Torch. Wild was chosen by Oprah Winfrey as her first selection for Oprah's Book Club 2.0. Wild won a Barnes & Noble Discover Award, an Indie Choice Award, an Oregon Book Award, a Pacific Northwest Booksellers Award, and a Midwest Booksellers Choice Award, among others. The movie adaptation of Wild will be released by Fox Searchlight in December 2014. The film is directed by Jean-Marc Vallée and stars Reese Witherspoon with a screenplay by Nick Hornby. Strayed's writing has appeared in the Best American Essays, The New York Times Magazine, The Washington Post Magazine, Vogue, Salon, The Missouri Review, The Sun, Tin House, The Rumpus, where she wrote the popular Dear Sugar Advice column, and elsewhere. Strayed was the guest editor of Best American Essays 2013 and has contributed to many anthologies. Her books have been translated into more than 30 languages around the world. She holds an MFA in fiction writing from Syracuse University and a bachelor's degree from the University of Minnesota. She lives in Portland, Oregon with her husband and their two children. Bad Doctor Bio, Dr. David Perlmutter. This is a long, uninterrupted string of hard to process things. Dr. Perlmutter is very qualified, but mentions everything, including medical school awards, which detracts from the overall effect. David Perlmutter, MD, FACN, ABIHM, is a board-certified neurologist and fellow of the American College of Nutrition who received his MD degree from the University of Miami School of Medicine, where he won the research award. Dr. Perlmutter is a frequent lecturer at symposia sponsored by such medical institutions as Columbia University, the University of Arizona, Scripps Institute, and Harvard University. He has contributed extensively to the world medical literature with publications appearing in the Journal of Neurosurgery, the Southern Medical Journal, Journal of Applied Nutrition, and Archives of Neurology. He is the author of The Better Brain Book and the number one New York Times bestseller, Grain Brain. He is recognized internationally as a leader in the field of nutritional influences in neurological disorders. Dr. Perlmutter has been interviewed on many nationally syndicated radio and television programs, including 2020, Larry King Live, CNN, Fox News, Fox and Friends, The Today Show, Oprah, Dr. Oz, and The CBS Early Show. In 2002, Dr. Perlmutter was the recipient of the Linus Pauling Award for his innovative approaches to neurological disorders and, in addition, was awarded the Denham Harmon Award for his pioneering work in the application of free radical science to clinical medicine. He is the recipient of the 2006 National Nutritional Foods Association Clinician of the Year Award. Dr. Perlmutter serves as medical advisor for The Dr. Oz Show. Good Dr. Bio, Dr. Benjamin Carson. Contrast this to Dr. Carson, who focuses only on the credentials and status signifiers that the reader would care about and understand, like his specialties and companies he works for. Dr. Benjamin Carson is a professor of neurosurgery, plastic surgery, oncology, and pediatrics, and the director of pediatric neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins Medical Institutions. He is also the author of four best-selling books, Gifted Hands, Think Big, The Big Picture, and Take the Risk. He serves on the boards of the Kellogg Company, Costco, and the Academy of Achievement, among others, and is an Emeritus Fellow of the Yale Corporation. He and his wife, Candy, co-founded the Carson Scholars Fund, www.carsonscholars.org, 
a 501c3 established to counteract America's crisis in education by identifying and rewarding academic role models in the 4th through 11th grades, regardless of race, creed, religion, and socioeconomic status, who also demonstrate humanitarian qualities. There are over 4,800 scholars in 45 states. Ben and Candy are the parents of three grown sons and reside in Baltimore County, Maryland. High status and short, Lynn Vincent. This bio is the perfect less is more for an author with a lot of credentials. When you've done what Lynn has done, you can just say it quickly and succinctly. Lynn Vincent is the New York Times bestselling writer of Heaven is for Real and Same Kind of Difference as Me. The author or co-author of 10 books, Lynn has sold 12 million copies since 2006. She worked for 11 years as a writer and editor at the national news bi-weekly World Magazine and is a U.S. Navy veteran. High status but undersells, Michael Lewis. Contrast this to Michael Lewis, who is a very well-known author, but still leaves quite a bit out of his bio that would help many readers understand who he is and why they should care. Even Michael Lewis is not famous enough to assume that people know him. Michael Lewis, the author of Boomerang, Liar's Poker, The New New Thing, Moneyball, The Blind Side, Panic, Home Game, and The Big Short, among other works, lives in Berkeley, California, with his wife, Tabitha Soren, and their three children. Bad Amanda Ripley. Many authors have different bios on different books because they leave the bio writing to their publisher, which is a huge mistake. You can see the difference in the author Amanda Ripley. Her bad bio is strangely both boring and overselling. Amanda Ripley is a literary journalist whose stories on human behavior and public policy have appeared in Time, The Atlantic, and Slate, and helped Time win two National Magazine Awards. To discuss her work, she has appeared on ABC, NBC, CNN, Fox News, and NPR. Ripley's first book, The Unthinkable, was published in 15 countries and turned into a PBS documentary. Good Amanda Ripley. Contrast that to this good bio, where she comes off as much more of an authority, mainly because her other books are mentioned as were her awards. Amanda Ripley is an investigative journalist for Time, The Atlantic, and other magazines. She is the author most recently of The Smartest Kids in the World and How They Got That Way. Her first book, The Unthinkable, Who Survives When Disaster Strikes and Why, was published in 15 countries and turned into a PBS documentary. Her work has helped Time win two National Magazine Awards. Good first-person bio, Charles Duhigg. Personally, I don't think first-person bios work well, but some authors like them, as do some readers. The only place they feel appropriate to me is as about pages of websites. But of the first-person bios I've seen, this is the best. My name is Charles Duhigg, and I'm a reporter for the New York Times. I'm also the author of The Power of Habit, about the science of habit formation in our lives, companies, and societies. I've worked at the Times since 2006. Last year, I was part of the team that won the Pulitzer Prize for a series about Apple named The Eye Economy. And before that, I contributed to other series, including Golden Opportunities, which received the George Polk Award, the Sidney Hillman Award, and a Deadline Award, The Reckoning, which won the Loeb and was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, and Toxic Waters, which received the Scripps Howard National Journalism Award, the Investigative Reporters and Editors Medal, the National Academy's Reporting Award, and others. I'm a native of New Mexico, and I studied history at Yale and received an MBA from Harvard Business School. Before becoming a journalist, I worked in private equity and, for one terrifying day, was a bike messenger in San Francisco. I have appeared on This American Life, The Colbert Report, NPR, The News Hour with Jim Lehrer, and Frontline. If you would like to contact me, I would love to hear from you. I'm at charles at charlesduhigg.com. Overselling, Rebecca Skloot. This is such unnecessary overselling. Rebecca Skloot wrote a major bestseller, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. But she mentions all sorts of nonsense in this bio that no reader will care about. You get the doth protest too much vibe from this one. Compare this to Tim Ferriss, who also lists a lot, but does so quickly and gets it out of the way. Rebecca Skloot is an award-winning science writer whose articles have appeared in the New York Times Magazine, O, oh, The Oprah Magazine, Discover, and others. She has worked as a correspondent for NBR's Radio Lab and PBS's Nova Science Now, and is a contributing editor at Popular Science Magazine and guest editor of the Best American Science Writing 2011. 
She is a former vice president of the National Book Critics Circle and has taught creative nonfiction and science journalism at the University of Memphis, the University of Pittsburgh, and New York University. Her debut book, The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, took more than 10 years to research and write and became an instant New York Times bestseller. She has been featured on numerous television shows, including CBS Sunday Morning and The Colbert Report. Her book has received widespread critical acclaim, with reviews appearing in The New Yorker, Washington Post, Science, Entertainment Weekly, People, and many others. It won the Chicago Tribune Heartland Prize and Welcome Trust Book Prize, and was named the Best Book of 2010 by Amazon.com and a Best Book of the Year by Entertainment Weekly, O, oh, The Oprah Magazine, The New York Times, Washington Post, U.S. News & World Report, and numerous others. Ridiculous overselling, Dinesh D'Souza. We'll end with one of the worst bios I've ever seen. This is a real bio pulled off the Amazon page of his recent book. It is over 500 words of preposterously insecure and arrogant crap. I can't imagine reading this bio and not respecting the author less afterwards. Dinesh D'Souza has had a 25-year career as a writer, scholar, and public intellectual. A former policy analyst in the Reagan White House, D'Souza also served as John M. Olin Fellow at the American Enterprise Institute and the Robert and Karen Rishwain Fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University. He served as the president of the King's College in New York City from 2010 to 2012. Called one of the top young public policy makers in the country by Investors Business Daily, D'Souza quickly became known as a major influencer on public policy through his writings. His first book, Illiberal Education, in 1991, published the phenomenon of political correctness in America's colleges and universities and became a New York Times bestseller for 15 weeks. It has been listed as one of the most influential books of the 1990s. In 1995, D'Souza published The End of Racism, which became one of the most controversial books of the time and another national bestseller. His 1997 book, Ronald Reagan, How an Ordinary... His 1997 book, Ronald Reagan, How an Ordinary Man Became an Extraordinary Leader, was the first book to make the case for Reagan's intellectual and political importance. D'Souza's The Virtue of Prosperity in 2000 explored the social and moral implications of wealth. In 2002, D'Souza published his New York Times bestseller, What's So Great About America?, which was critically acclaimed for its thoughtful patriotism. His 2003 book, Letters to a Young Conservative, has become a handbook for a new generation of young conservatives inspired by D'Souza's style and ideas. The Enemy at Home, published in 2006, stirred up a furious debate, both on the left and the right. It became a national bestseller and was published in paperback in 2008, with a new afterword by the author responding to his critics. Just as in his early years, D'Souza was one of the nation's most articulate spokesmen for a reasoned and thoughtful conservatism, in recent years he has been an equally brilliant and forceful defender of Christianity. What's so great about Christianity not only intelligently explained the core doctrines of the Christian faith, it also explained how the freedom and prosperity associated with Western civilization rest upon the foundation of biblical Christianity. Life After Death, The Evidence, shows why the atheist critique of immortality is irrational and draws the striking conclusion that it is reasonable to believe in life after death. In 2010, D'Souza wrote The Roots of Obama's Rage, which was described as the most influential political book of the year and proved to be yet another bestseller. In 2012, D'Souza published two books, God Forsaken and Obama's America, Unmaking the American Dream, the latter climbing to number one on the New York Times bestseller list and inspiring a documentary on the same topic. The film, called 2016 Obama's America, has risen to the second highest all-time political documentary, passing Michael Moore's Sicko and Al Gore's An Inconvenient Truth. In addition, 2016 has risen to number four on the best-selling list of all documentaries. These endeavors, not to mention a razor-sharp wit and entertaining style, have allowed D'Souza to participate in highly publicized debates about Christianity with some of the most famous atheists and skeptics of our time. Born in Mumbai, India, D'Souza came to the U.S. as an exchange student and graduated Phi Beta Kappa from Dartmouth College in 1983. D'Souza has been named one of America's most influential conservative thinkers by the New York Times Magazine. The World Affairs Council lists him as one of the nation's 500 leading authorities on international issues, and Newsweek cited him as one of the country's most prominent Asian Americans. 
D'Souza's articles have appeared in virtually every major magazine and newspaper, including the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, The Atlantic Monthly, Vanity Fair, New Republic, and National Review. He has appeared on numerous television programs, including The Today Show, Nightline, The News Hour on PBS, The O'Reilly Factor, Moneyline, Hannity, Bill Maher, NPR's All Things Considered, CNBC's Kudlow Report, Lou Dobbs Tonight, and Real Time with Bill Maher. Craft your author bio. Number one, demonstrate your authority and credentials on the subject of your book, but don't overstate them. Number two, include things that build credibility or are interesting without going overboard. Number three, mention your website and any books you have previously written, but don't oversell them. Number four, use relevant names if they're appropriate without name dropping. And number five, keep it short and interesting without leaving anything important out. Once you've crafted your perfect author bio, it's time to move on to your author photo. That's what we'll cover in the next lesson.